welcome to easy elim being simplified my name is ruth and today we are going to be looking at the topic energy changes in physical and chemical processes so for today we'll do enthalpy of displacement so you look at what enthalpy of displacement is an example of an experimental setup and then a few questions so heat of displacement or enthalpy of displacement is defined as the enthalpy change that occurs when one mole of a substance is displaced from its solution. So this is like a displacement reaction, but now the energy change that occurs during that reaction. So for example, if we were to calculate the molar enthalpy change for the reaction or displacement of copper ions, from solution by zinc or iron. Since zinc and iron are more reactive in the reactivity series, they are added to copper solution. So this is the procedure. A plastic cup or a beaker is wrapped with a newspaper leaf and then 25 centimeters cubed or 0.1 copper sulfate. So this is a solution that contains the copper ion, is transferred into the beaker and the temperature is recorded. And then we add 0.5 grams of zinc powder, is transferred into the plastic cup and stirred with a thermometer. So the highest temperature is obtained by the solution and is recorded. So this is the setup we add we measure the temperature and the change. So some of the things you notice in this reaction is that the blue copper two sulfate is going to fade and then you're also going to see some brown deposit. What happens is that since zinc is higher in the electrochemical series than copper, it's going to displace copper ion from its solution. So zinc will react with copper sulfate to form zinc sulfate and copper ions. You can see the copper ions are displaced from copper ion to copper solid. So that's where we get the brown deposits and these brown deposits are from the copper. So this is the displacement. So during the reaction, the copper ions in solution are replaced by the colorless zinc ions. So the blue color fades and brown deposits of copper metal are formed in the plastic cup. So excess zinc powder is used to ensure complete displacement. So you notice it will always be a bit excessive. So make sure you're able to identify which, uh, if it's excess or not. But you notice when you are calculating the molar uh, enthalpy, you notice you use the moles of the copper sulfate. So for example, in the reaction we just did, the results were shown, shown above for the ones that were obtained. And then we can be able to answer this question. So the initial temperature of copper sulfate was 23 degrees Celsius. The highest temperature was 33. So the temperature change was 10 degrees. So you note that the temperature change is 10 degrees Celsius. And then the volume of copper sulfate used was 25 degrees Celsius. The mass of the zinc powder, which was in excess, which we do not need in our calculation. And then the density of solution is 1 gram. The specific heat capacity, so C is 4.2. Remember, it's kilojoules per kilogram per Kelvin. So we also need the mass of the volume of the solution, which is now going to be the mass of our solution. So M is going to be 25 grams because we take the volume. But if we convert it into kilogram, it will be 25 divided by 1000, which forms 0 0.25 kilogram. So the volume of the solution remains a change after the reaction. That's why we still remain with 25 grams. So if you were to calculate the heat change that occurs, it's going to be a specific heat capacity times mass of solutions times temperature change, which is going to be 4.2 times mass, which is 0 0.25 kilograms times 10. Remember we said we do not convert because if you convert individually, it's still going to be in kilo, kilojoules. So this gives us 10.5 kilojoules. And so the next thing is the molar heat of displacement. So we know we need the moles of copper ions, which is in the copper sulfate. So we get the moles by the information that we have been given. 
So we were told it was two zero point two m of twenty five centimeter cube of copper two ions. So we can calculate the moles from this. So it is zero point two moles, which are in a thousand centimeters cubed. What about in twenty five centimeters cubed? Which is 0 0.2 times 25 divided by 1000, which gives us 0 0.005 moles. So if 0 0.005 moles of copper is displaced uh, to give of 10.5 kilojoules, what about one mole? So this is the same as 10.5 divided by 0 0.005, which gives us 2,100, and it is kilojoules per mole. And remember, since the temperature is increasing, it tells us that this is an exothermic reaction, so the answer will be negative. So that's how you calculate the displacement. Let's do another one more question. Before we do a question, let's make some conclusion about this experiment. So the final temperature of the mixture is higher than the initial temperature, which means that the, uh, the temperature or heat change of the product is lower than that of the reactant. So this reaction is exothermic actually. So the molar heat of displacement of copper ions it's around negative 210 kilojoules per mole and it's at 2100. And when you look at the thermochemical equation, as I said before, this is the balanced chemical equation with the heat change at the end. So the experimental value of the heat liberated is lower than that of than the theoretical value because there is heat lost into the surrounding and the heat absorbed by apparatus is not accounted for. Remember we mentioned this in the previous video when we were starting on the heat of combustion. So you can be asked to mention why there is not that change. So this is another example, we will do it together. So when excess magnesium powder, so we have magnesium powder is added to 100 centimeters cubed of 0 0.5 and two sulfates. So we have the mass, of solution which is going to be a hundred grams because it's a hundred centimeters cubed the pale green color solution faded and the temperature rose by six so the change in temperature is six degrees celsius so write an ionic equation for the reaction so we know it's magnesium powder the equation first then iron two sulfate appears to form magnesium sulfate plus iron solid so it's the same as um, magnesium plus iron two ions to form this is aqueous to form magnesium two plus aqueous plus iron solid this is the ionic equation then calculate the molar heat of reaction given that the specific heat change is 4.2 you can see now this is in joules and grams so our calculation will be so heat change is going to be the specific heat capacity times mass of solution times temperature change so the specific heat capacity is 4.2 and remember it's joules per gram so our mass will remain as it is times the mass which is 100 grams times temperature change which is 6 which gives us 2,520 joules. So if you were to calculate the mole and now the moles from the information we have been told, the uh, information on the iron 2 sulfate is 0 0.5 m and the volume was 100 centimeters cubed. So this is the same as 0 0.5 moles in 1,000 centimeters cubed. What about in a hundred centimeters cubed? This is the same as 0 0.5 times a thousand times a hundred, sorry, divided by a thousand, which gives you 0 0.005 moles. So if 
0 0.005 moles produces 2520 joules of energy what about 1 mole which is the same as 25 20 joules divided by 0 0.005 which gives us 5.4 thousand k that is joules per mole so I have not been told to leave your unit in a certain way, so you can leave it like this. So we divide by a thousand to give you 504 kilojoules per mole. And remember, our reaction was exothermic because there is a temperature rise. So this is going to be negative. This is also going to be negative. So that brings us to the end of enthalpy change in displacement. So see you in the next session.